Hello, hello, this is Manic Insomniac, and welcome to an audio log for D&D. It's been a little while, but I figured now was the best time to do it, since we've discovered some things, and if you've read the title of this video, you can understand why I figured this was about the appropriate time to make a video on this. Now, I don't know how common apocalyptic events are in D&D. You see often schemes revolving around big take-over-the-world plots, or um, become a massively powerful entity, or, or even a god. But never apocalyptic events to my knowledge. Not that my knowledge is that expansive when it comes to D&D, I am a fairly new player. But still, it doesn't seem to have much in the limelight. But now it comes that the Wednesday night game I play in is going to get one such event. And it's going to be one of the orbital bombardment variety. Something's coming and it's going to exterminate us on the world. As players, we've always kind of known for a while that such an event was coming. The DM had let it slip. Um, probably about over a year ago now. It's just that our characters had themselves had no clue. And for our knowledge it was going to be like years off. Uh, it wouldn't affect our characters unless we were still playing this campaign potentially like three or four real life years away, let alone in the game itself. But now the characters have found out. And we know when. The funny thing is the characters got confirmation from not one but two sources within like mere days of each other and it's quite co coincidentally. It's surprising really because knowing our DM, the first one has been there since the first session of the campaign, literally on the edge of notice. I mean heck, our party safe house is literally across the road from where it was located. So we received a clock, and not just any clock, but an ancient dwarven clock. Anybody who's seen my previous videos will know how significant that is. Dwarves in this campaign are on the surface your stereotypical fantasy dwarves, but their ancestors. To paraphrase my DM, were Magitek Mormon Dwarves from outer space. I'll let that sink in for a second. Now, they were invading aliens that colonised this planet and subjugated its indigenous species, elves, humans and even dragons, up until they were overthrown by a rebellion led by various ancient dragons, the closest thing the world had to gods at that point. Brixithalmus, uh, a red dragon of great power and consort herself to the Red Dragon Emperor, um, was able to infect the Dwarves' orbital space station and break the, crystal, the crystal tower, which may or may not have been an orbital elevator, or at least something very, very similar. The resultant event, known as Heaven's Fall, introduced magic to the world, destroyed an entire continent, and essentially rendering it into an archipelago known as Kurabel, which is where our characters currently live. So this clock... Ancient Dwarven artifacts tend to be quite powerful, and often more akin to stuff we have in real life. This clock actually resembles a digital clock in design, it's a metal case with glowing numbers on the front. But what's important about it is it doesn't tell the time. It's counting down, and all that's left on the clock when we find it is a number corresponding to 5 months and 11 days. Now the second piece of information comes from an unexpected source. Again, if you've seen my previous videos, you'll know my original character in this campaign, Axel Ron called the Dwarven Fighter, got separated from the party and basically presumed dead to the much of the world. In fact, whilst I continued to play with a new character between sessions, myself and the DM would essentially play by post to cover Axel's adventures. He travelled for some time with an enemy faction, a mutually beneficial arrangement to allow them to travel through the upper reaches of the Underdark so they could reach the surface again. Axel, being a dwarf, was the pathfinder, using his natural abilities to search out the correct path, and the enemy warband had the numbers and resources to actually fight their way through the danger that would be on the route. Normally this would be uh, a few groups of drow, and what I think were umberhulks at one point. Of course, once they got to the surface, Axel was no longer useful to them, so they planned to cut out his brain and turn him into an undead drone for their army. One of the clerics in the group, though, had had a vision and decided it would be better for Axel to go and do something about it. The vision was thus. I sacrificed my eyes to see the mysteries of Xenotel, to see beyond the fictions of this lower world to the truth above, and that wish was granted. My dreams are haunted now by visions of fire rain from the skies and death on a scale I cannot begin to convey. I see a ring in darkness suddenly filled with blazing light that chills me, and a wondrous clock reading... 15.010.10.105. Cryptic. But when you convert those numbers to match up with the ancient dwarven character, they read as the 15th day of the 10th month in the 10th year 
of the 15th era. The campaign we're playing in takes place in the 10th year of the 15th era, and we have just reached the 5th month. We discovered this clock on the 4th of the 5th month, known as uh, Tanrildum. The clock read 5 months and 11 days, which matches up using the Dwarven calendar to this date. So we know what the apocalypse was coming. So Axel fled, and coming close to death as he tried to fight his way through a very dangerous jungle to get back to civilization. But eventually, through some luck and a lot of tenacity, he managed to reunite with the party some three or four days after this clock was found. Through corroboration of the character's knowledge from the, all the multiple sources we've had over the game, uh, we were able to piece together that the Dwarven space station is more than just that. It's a portal through which a fleet will arrive. And when they see the failure of the project to prepare the world for habitation, they will simply rain fire from the heavens and break the world. Scary stuff, um, but not without hope. Moisan, the cleric that uh, delivered this prophecy to Axel, believes that whilst there are people that could provide salvation hand in hand with Doom, there are three such entities that could help us avert this apocalypse. The Liar, the Consort, and the Mad King. Now we believe we have the Liar already, quite fortuitous. Basically the soul of an ancient dwarven engineer who was trapped in a sword, that is carried by our wizard. Although he previously attempted to get himself installed in the space station where he would become a functional god, he does have the knowledge that could lead us to the path. Luckily as well, whilst he is known as the Liar, another member of his family's bones were once interred in a magic box that rattles in the presence of lies. So we can sift out the truth from the lies and hopefully get him onto our side. He's content to let the world be destroyed and float around in a vacuum until he's hopefully picked up by his race, but we're hoping to get him on our side. The console is going to be a little trickier. The most likely candidate for his identity would be the dragon Prixithalmus, the red dragon consort who was the leader of the rebellion. After the rebellion, she was unfortunately caught by the dwarves and, in her human guise, was experimented on and they used her memories to try and make a cure to reverse the damage she'd done. In the process of destroying the cure, uh, we discovered her comatose body, but our party's monk, who is diametrically opposed to the dragon emperor and all of his followers, feared the worst and plunged a dagger into her spine, effectively killing her outright. Not all is lost though. Fortunately for her, we left her, her body in the care of a man named Kotar. Originally he was just a human hireling, the man with a crossbow we helped gathered to help us along the way. But along the path he got possessed by the spirit of a devilfish known as Araquil. Devilfish are those psychic manta rays uh, with that weird like Aztec style name that you can see whatever that nobody can pronounce. We just call them devilfish as they're colloquially known in the setting. But, yeah, as I said, we left her body in the care of Araquil. Now he left, and we didn't know where he was for a long time, and we realise now that Araquil actually has the power to, in some form or another, bring someone back from the dead. Maybe not in their original body, but in some fashion. It's how he got into Kotal's body in the first place. His vessel, a stone effigy, was smashed, and he fled spiritually into this human's body because he was asleep at the time and overtook him. He'd actually promised this service to Axel at one point way back, we just all forgot about it. But another stroke of luck, we were looking for rumours anyway, and our hirelings managed to turn up the fact that Kotal had been spotted in Midmark, the city where we currently are, booking passage back to the direction where we first found him. So we can give chase, and it's only been a matter of days since he was nearby. Hopefully we can find him, and hopefully he still has the Dragon Emperor's consort, Pricks because she could be instrumental, and even if she's not the consort we need, she's the one that overthrew the dwarves in the first place. She's going to have a lot of knowledge that can help us avert this apocalypse. The final one, the Mad King, we don't actually have too many clues about, unfortunately. There are a few potential candidates. The Dragon Emperor himself, who's been known to be a bit erratic in his rule as of late, but that's mostly rumours. There's an entity known as the Dark King, who is currently um, attempting to take over much of the northern part of the island with vast armies of undying soldiers. He was actually the leader of the war Mad Axel followed for a little bit, so he could be the Mad King. The final one is a personal one that I think is a dwarf known as Marchmane, who is a high-ranking official in the Silver Throne Company. A company with some shady dealings and obviously a lot of connection back to the ancient Dwarven Empire. So 
that's about it for the story of the apocalypse to come. Can we avert it? Mm, only time will tell and it really hinges on us finding these things. Really we need to be able to get back up to the Dwarven space station, but that space station had automatic defences and the virus that the Dragon Emperor Dragon Empress Consort put on it essentially means it just shoots at anything that gets close so we might not be able to get there without some trickery or psychic out of body experiences who knows we'll only time will tell so anyway thanks for listening if you like this video please drop a like and of course the comment section is always available for discussion I'd like to hear your thoughts on your own apocalyptic events and your own thoughts on this one. I know we're quite biased but our DM has a very very unique campaign and a very interesting and engaging one. We talk about this all week long despite it only being the four hour once a week session and it is encompassed two years of our life at this point. We are in deep and we want this to do well so let me know what you think down below. If you want to see more like this you can always subscribe. I do do audio logs like this from time to time on D&D &D, and also a bunch of let's plays. But for now I've been Manic Insomniac. Good night.